Ever wonder how scientists come up with all those groundbreaking discoveries? What's their secret? You might think it's some kind of mystical process, but it's actually quite straightforward. This video will delve into the world of science and unravel the steps that guide every scientific adventure. We'll explore the ins and outs of an essential tool that scientists use to uncover the secrets of the universe. Well, it's not magic, it's the scientific method. Let's unravel this mystery. So what exactly is the scientific method? It's not some secret code, but a systematic process. Imagine it as a roadmap for exploring the vast landscape of the unknown. This method is a structured approach used by scientists globally to dig deep into the mysteries of the universe, to acquire new knowledge, or to refine what we already know. At its core, the scientific method is a series of steps that scientists follow to illuminate truths about the world around us. It involves making observations, asking questions, forming hypotheses, conducting experiments, analyzing data, and drawing conclusions. It's like a detective solving a case, but instead of crimes, we're solving puzzles about the nature of reality itself. Ultimately, the scientific method is our most reliable tool for understanding how the world works. It's not just for scientists in white lab coats. It's a logical framework that can be applied in everyday life. It's the backbone of all scientific inquiry and discovery. Step one in the scientific method is observation. Scientists aren't just sitting around, they're very observant. This is where the journey of discovery begins. They keenly observe the world around them, scrutinizing every detail, every pattern, and every anomaly. It's not just casual observation, but a conscious effort to understand the intricacies of the world we live in. Observation in the scientific method is like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. Scientists look at a piece of the puzzle, a phenomenon, and try to understand how it fits into the larger picture. They gather data, record what they see, and chronicle the details. This might be the color of a leaf, the behavior of an animal, or the speed of a falling object, but it doesn't stop there. They also have to be meticulous, ensuring that their observations are accurate and reliable. They might use tools or equipment to aid their observation, from simple magnifying glasses to complex telescopes or microscopes. They might observe something just once or a hundred times depending on what is needed to gather enough data. This is a crucial step because it forms the basis for the rest of the scientific method. It's the raw material that scientists use to formulate questions, hypotheses, and eventually theories. It's about seeing the world not as it appears, but as it truly is. And so, observation is not just seeing but understanding. It's about looking beyond the surface and uncovering the hidden secrets of the universe. Observation is the spark that ignites the scientific process. After observing, scientists ask questions. They're naturally curious. Yes, indeed, the power of questioning is an integral part of the scientific method. It's the fuel that drives the scientific engine, sparking the quest for knowledge. Forming questions is no trivial task. It is an art, a skill that requires critical thinking and a keen understanding of the observed phenomena. So, what makes a question scientifically valid? Well, it needs to be clear, focused, and most importantly, testable. In other words, it must be a question that can be addressed through experiment or observation. For example, if we observe that plants seem to grow better in sunlight, we might ask, how does sunlight affect plant growth? This question guides our research, setting the stage for the next steps in the scientific method. So, remember, the questions we ask are not just simple curiosities. They set the direction. They mold our exploration. A good question is the compass that guides the scientific journey. Next, scientists form a hypothesis, an educated guess, based on their observations and questions. Now this isn't just any wild guess, it's a prediction, rooted in the knowledge they've gathered so far. Here's where the scientific method takes a turn towards the experimental. A hypothesis sets the stage for testing, it gives the scientists a specific outcome to look for, it's a beacon that guides the research, helping to steer clear of aimless wandering in the vast ocean of possibilities. But there's a catch, a hypothesis must be both testable and falsifiable. Testable means there should be a way to check if the hypothesis is correct. Falsifiable, on the other hand, means the hypothesis can be proven wrong. It's a delicate balance, ensuring that the hypothesis isn't just a shot in the dark, but a calculated step towards the truth. And this is the true beauty of a hypothesis. It's not just a guess, it's a tool. It sharpens the focus of the investigation, paving the way for the next step, the experiment. A hypothesis is a scientist's best guess, ready to be tested. Now comes the exciting part. Scientists conduct experiments to test their hypotheses. 
Think of it as a grand stage where the hypothesis, our best educated guess, steps into the limelight. It's showtime and the hypothesis must perform. Will it stand up to the challenge or falter under scrutiny? That's what experiments are designed to figure out. Experiments are the heart of the scientific method, the real meat and potatoes. They're the means by which we test the validity of our hypotheses, but designing and conducting an experiment isn't as simple as flipping a switch. It requires careful planning, meticulous execution, and an unbiased approach. First, let's talk about the design of the experiment. The design is driven by the hypothesis. If our hypothesis is that plant growth is affected by the amount of sunlight, then our experiment must be designed to test this. We might set up several plants under different light conditions and measure their growth over time. The key here is to control all other variables so that we can accurately assess the effect of sunlight. Now, on to conducting the experiment. This is where the rubber meets the road. It's about rolling up your sleeves and getting your hands dirty. It's about observing, measuring, recording, and repeating. Yes, repeating. Repetition is vital. It helps us ensure our results are not just a fluke. A good experiment is also replicable. That means that anyone, anywhere given the same conditions and procedures, should be able to achieve the same results. This is a fundamental principle of the scientific method and helps to validate the results. But remember, no matter how well an experiment is designed and conducted, it can only test the hypothesis, not prove it. If the results align with the hypothesis, it doesn't mean the hypothesis is proven beyond doubt. It simply means that under the specific conditions of the experiment, the hypothesis held up. Experiments put the hypothesis to the test. They're the reality check, the moment of truth for our educated guesses. So buckle up because the next step in the scientific method is analyzing the results and drawing conclusions. After the experiment, scientists analyze data and draw conclusions. This stage is a crucial component of the scientific method as it helps to validate or refute the initial hypothesis. Let's imagine a scientist, engrossed in his lab, surrounded by heaps of data gathered from his experiment. He doesn't just stare at the numbers or the graphs, he delves into them, seeking patterns and trends that may bring him closer to understanding the phenomenon he's studying. He might use statistical methods, mathematical models, or even computer simulations, all to help him make sense of the raw data. This is the analysis part where findings are interpreted, and the essence of the experiment is distilled. The scientist doesn't rush through it as it requires a keen eye and a sharp mind. Any overlooked detail or misinterpreted data could lead to incorrect conclusions and derail the entire endeavor. Once the analysis is complete, he's ready for the next step, drawing conclusions. He takes a step back, looks at the big picture, and tries to understand what his analysis means in the context of his initial hypothesis. Does the data support his hypothesis, or does it refute it? Maybe it's somewhere in between, partially supporting and partially refuting. If the data supports the hypothesis, then it is validated, and the scientist may choose to share his findings with the wider scientific community, opening up his work to scrutiny and further testing. If the data refutes the hypothesis, it doesn't mean the experiment was a failure. Science is as much about disproving theories as it is about proving them. The scientist may need to revise his hypothesis and start the process over again. Sometimes the conclusion may raise more questions than it answers, and that's okay. It's these new questions that keep science moving forward. Every conclusion is a new starting point, a new curiosity question, a new challenge to overcome. Analysis and conclusion, the final steps that bring the scientific method full circle. They are where the scientist's initial curiosity meets the fruits of his labor, where the questions meet the answers, and where the journey of discovery both ends and begins anew. So that's the scientific method in a nutshell. This powerful tool of discovery starts with a spark of curiosity, a question that needs answering. It's the heartbeat of scientific inquiry, pumping life into our quest for understanding. Then, we define what's at stake, setting the stage for the exploration to come. It's the compass that directs our scientific journey. Next we observe, we question, we hypothesize. These are the stepping stones, guiding us across the river of the unknown. Then comes the experiment, the crucible where our ideas are tested. It's the battleground where hypotheses stand their ground or crumble under scrutiny. Finally, we analyze and conclude. We take stock of our findings, making sense of the data. It's the lens through which we view our results, bringing clarity to our understanding. Remember, it's not magic. It's simply the scientific method, the key to all scientific discoveries. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment.
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.